All right. Hello, boys and girls. Welcome back to another episode of Cut the Shit, Get Fit. I'm your host, Rafael Mukdashevsky, and today I'm going solo and doing a couple new things. Um, right now, I am recording this episode on my phone because I think it would be nice for you guys to see me and who knows if this thing grows, it might be a video, whatever, we'll see what happens. And also, I am on Instagram Live for those who want to say hello, ask a question, or whatever they feel like doing. Um, so to start off the show, I always like to do shout outs to my top three cities that have been listening to me. And two of them are new, and one of them has gone up the ranks before. The new number one is Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you to everyone out in Atlanta. Um, and number two is Chicago, Illinois. Shout out to everyone in Chicago. And number three, the city has listened to my show before and made the top three. And I'm going to apologize if I screw up the name. It's Dunedin, New Zealand. Um, if anyone out there from New Zealand, please, please, let me know if I screwed up that name and I will say it right from now on. Now, what we're gonna talk about today is a case study of one of my clients. So I think it was last week that I posted my video on, not video, a podcast episode about low back pain and how I deal with it and um, I got a lot of great feedback and people asking questions, you know, they're asking me what system I follow, blah, 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 blah. So I thought it would be a cool episode if I did um, a case study with actually one of my clients. So this happened three, 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 four years ago now. Um, one of my clients, she does this uh, cycling ride called the Ride to Conquer Cancer. And uh, it was during the year where here in Vancouver, we had this huge windstorm and the day of the ride, we got hit with it pretty bad. And that summer we had a really, really, really dry summer. So all of our plants were dying, trees were pretty um, dried up. So you add wind to that whole equation, trees started falling. You know, a lot of people's cars who parked outside, trees fell on them so far, and yeah, that's what happened. Um, so, as she's going along on the highway, she's riding, and um, one of the trees fell down on her, right on her back, uh, hit her spine, hit her scapula. Um, the next thing over the weekend, because I train her on Mondays, she texts me saying, hey, by the way, not gonna make it on Monday, broke my back. And I was like, I thought she was like joking, but then she started sending like x-rays. And it turns out that, what was it? T9 was fractured in two spots. T10 was completely separated and T11 had one fracture. And she also broke her scapula in half. Um, so, pretty serious shit um, I was like holy shit um, okay how are you <laughs> so she started giving me all this information and uh, the surgeon decided to fuse her spine from T9 to T11 six pins and you know she's not allowed to weight bear or touch anything essentially for six weeks and I think when it comes from the rehab perspective, the big thing that people don't think about is how strong you have to be mentally. So with this particular client, she's the type of person that would look at the situation like, oh, whatever, it's a little bump in the road, I'm just gonna, you know, live my life. Where somebody else might be like, oh my God, my life is over, I'm never gonna walk again, I'm not gonna be able to do this, I wanna do that, and blah, 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 blah. Her mental toughness is probably the most crucial thing to her success. 
I don't think I did anything, to be honest. I was just there to guide her. But all of it was in her mind to um, get over this. So when we were texting back and forth when she was in the hospital, post-surgery, and from what I can make out of her, you know, <laughs> drug-induced texts, um, it, the accident happened in August. And in my head, I'm like, knowing her, she's going to be back in the gym that December. And I remember this clearly, December 15th was her first session with me. And that sounds crazy for someone who broke their back. Um, but I was very involved with the rehab process. And, you know, she's a type of person that wants to push the limit. And I'm the one that has to, like, get her to slow down a little bit. Um, so the moment she got out of surgery, I told her, Go see this physio, go see massage, and do what you got to do for active rehab in the hospital because they usually send a physio after a surgery like that. Um, and she listened to me. I believe she went to physio twice a week, massage once a week, for six weeks straight post-surgery. And then at the end of the six-week mark, she met back with her surgeon. And the surgeon's like, you know what? All the healing is going the right way. I'm really happy to see how you're progressing and you're cleared for exercise. So I was like, yes, okay, it's working. Um, so I got her back and I think, you no, know, honestly, for any kind of rehab situation, it's trial and error. I don't care if you rolled your ankle, you broke your back, you have an ACL tear, whatever it may be, it's trial and error because it's not a black and white answer that, hey, you tore your rotator cuff, these are the exercises you're supposed to do, these are the things you need to do within this four week span, everyone's gonna be different. So, with her, we focused on a lot of soft tissue work, a lot of movement, a lot of mobility, and I just wanted her to move, to like get her feeling like, you know, she's back in the gym setting. She's going to kind of feel like she was back, like she was before. And even the first month, like, I remember her program was literally the first 20 minutes was like soft tissue work. And then we went into like breathing. We went into like how to do the uh, bird dog again every basic exercise you can think of, I wanted to put on her first day to see how she would feel. And even after her first day, she's like, this is bullshit, when are we gonna do deadlifts because I wanna get to 200? And I'm like, okay, slow down, that's great. Let's build a foundation and get there first. After her first session, the next day, she was super sore. And, um, even before that, I did a little, you know, assessment on her and everything was really limited, but not as much as I thought it would be. And all she would deal with is like waking up in the morning, everything felt super tight and like, it just took some time for her to get moving. And then her rotation to the right, I believe was a little bit limited and to the left, she was pretty good. Um, Shoulder was kind of sore all the time, but you know, she also had a daughter, so she would always try to pick her up. And you know, maybe if she didn't pick up her daughter as much, it would have been a little bit faster, but that's okay. So, after some trial and error, now I got a base, a baseline of what she could do. And I think for any kind of rehab patient or client, you got to go down to the basics, right? Um, and find things that work and stick to them. And then when I found, like, say I got 10 exercises, and I remember it was like literally belly breathing, um, bird dog, getting into a dead bug position and just moving the arms because the legs would be way too much. And she was okay laying on her back, it was getting up. So that was the other exercise I gave her, is I, I was teaching how to do the Turkish get up rolling to her one side and then we went into like crawling we went into you know t-rex rows 
We did assisted bodyweight squats, like the most basic stuff. We followed that for a month, and then what we did from there was I would implement one or two new exercises that were a little bit more advanced and see how the body felt. And here's an example. You know, I'm not perfect. I don't have all the answers, but I gave her push-ups, elevated push-ups at a pretty high elevation. Like it wasn't a bench level, it was a lot higher. And I gave her only five reps. And the first time we did it, we did um, two, two sets. The next day, her core was so sore that she said it was really hard to move. And I'm like, honestly, we haven't done that movement probably for six months. And after a dramatic you know, accident and surgery, you will get sore. And a lot of it, anytime she got sore, it wasn't her like abs core. It was more rib cage in here. And also like any kind of like intercostal muscles where once you take a deep breath, she would feel really sore. So, you know, that's a good example of like, okay, maybe we advanced too quickly and then we scaled it back. So the next week I gave her only one set of those elevated pushups and then the next day I asked her you know how did she feel how did you feel and she's like you know a little sore but not that bad and I'm like okay that's good it's always trying to find that capacity for any client really but when it comes to rehab their threshold of what they can take is very limited the moment you go past that threshold they're gonna be fucked and they're gonna be like oh my god exercise is the worst thing for me but in reality you need them to keep moving to build that you know stress level to build the capacity so that everyday life is not going to kick them in the ass now you know that was kind of my system is keep to the exercise that doesn't um, destroy you and then add one new one that would kind of take that you know program to the next level I would say and see what happens if it's a little bit of soreness not too bad and then you're good, you follow that pattern. And then every month, every new phase of her program, I would add in another thing, and then another thing. And then all those little basics started going just into her warm up and things like that. And now, you know, three years later, she's pretty good to go. Like, yeah, she has limitations in some of rotation stuff. Um, she has, you know, her left shoulder's definitely has less range of motion than the right but when it comes to strength like she's pretty strong like she can lift heavy she's doing all the things she was doing before and you know I haven't put her back onto the trap bar deadlift or straight bar deadlift only because you know I'm most likely she's going to be fine but for me I wouldn't want someone with a broken back to get into that single leg deadlifts for sure she's doing them no problem. Um, and you know, when she went back to her follow-up with her surgeon, I believe three months after, um, she got cleared after that six week mark, he was actually very surprised how quickly she, um, improved. And he's like, I don't know what you're doing, but continue doing it because I've never seen a patient like you go through such a drastic and quick recovery. And, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I think the combination of my training and her, like, her mental toughness and her going to physio, rehab, and massage was, like, the perfect combination. And this just goes to show, like, when you have a well-constructed individual program that focuses on the basics, people are going to move a lot better. They're gonna feel a lot better. And even someone who broke their back can go from laying in a hospital bed, wondering if they're gonna walk, to I'm gonna crush the weights in the gym in a year from now, just like I was before. So I think with any kind of trainer out there, or even any fitness enthusiast that had a you know, 
accident, surgery, whatever, and you get that printout from the doctor saying like, this is what happened, you know, you have disc, de disc, de pfft, disc degeneration from L5, L4, you have bleeding discs, you have this and that. That is scary, but people have that all the time and they go through a rehab process and it's better. So don't let things like that scare you. And as a coach, you know, when you get a referral for a, for, from like a physio or a chiro and this patient has pain, your job can be intimidating and scary. But remember, when you talk to the individual and be like, hey, how are you feeling? They're like, ah, you know, it's, it's all good. They get actually used to the pain they're at. And your job is to get them out of that by, you know, 20% if you're successful. And if he can do that, then you're a rock star. Um, don't be intimidated with what doctors and surgeons tell you if you've experienced an accident or, you know, you're coming out of surgery. Because you can always get better. As a coach, don't feel intimidated if you get a new client that has a shit ton of issues you can help them feel better if your programming is smart and you know when to make judgment calls and know when to progress and regress them. Like I've been saying over and over again, know your progressions, know your regressions, and you will be able to help so many people out there in pain. Um, another update to kind of tell you about um, my client is that she doesn't experience any more, but she was saying like her sternum would get super sore. That was the only thing that was really um, tough for her to get over was her sternum felt like it was really sore about to crack open or something like that. And I think it was actually a fracture. So she was on a bike cycling, tree comes behind her, hits her. And I believe her sternum actually hit her handlebars. And you know, like you don't have a lot of meat on the middle of your chest and if that hits hard onto a handlebar with the weight of a tree yeah fuck that's gonna hurt and you know if you've broken a rib before it's not like you just sit there like if you had a cast on your arm and it's just gonna feel better like you still use your rib cage for breathing and everything you do in life so it's gonna take a while for it to heal um so be patient be patient with any kind of rehab process um i'm gonna leave it there and if anybody has questions on rehab or, you know, maybe you had a fusion surgery on your spine and you have some questions of what you should be doing, let me know. I'm here to help. I have a ton of experience with people with back pain and back surgeries and how to coach them through things. So let me know. Um, the other thing I'm going to bring up is I still have my Cut the Shit Get Fit newsletter. I'm going to post it in the show notes in this um, episode. And again, I'm gonna ask everyone who's listening, please, 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 please share this podcast with your friends and family to make this thing grow as big as possible so we can push away all that shitty information in the industry and provide you with the best in the world from me and all the other coaches I look up to. And that is it for me. We're gonna end it off there. Feel free to reach out and uh, we'll see you guys next week.